up first, we're going to talk about my uh, unfortunate choice of boys. Why do you say unfortunate? Because it's not... I don't feel it's a good review well, for the go, show. Well, let's go ahead. Uh, I, p- I, I picked Boys in the Trees based solely on some artwork I saw. <laughs> some of it looked like it was the sequel to Twilight, and some of it looked pretty cool. Uh, the summary for this movie is on Halloween 1997, two estranged teen skaters embark on a surreal journey through their memories, dreams, and fears. Written by Nicholas Verso, and uh, just directed by him as well. <laughs> uh, just for fun, I looked at the tags for this movie, and here are some of my favorite plot keywords that you can find this movie for. You know, just go along with it. They're tags: um, Halloween costume, skateboarding, wolf mask, wolf costume, estranged friend, sitting in a tree, internet porn, drinking vodka from the bottle, teenage drinking, watching porn on the internet, dial-up connection, teenage friends rekindling friendships, shirtless male. Would you think that... Mm. Do they drink vodka out of a bottle? Yeah. Do people search for that to find movies? Where's the porn coming at? I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't remember. Just because they're, they're teenagers? Or you just... It's just a given that porn's in Well, it's life. 1997. If there was internet porn in this movie... Oh, dialogue. It was like waiting five minutes for a picture. <laughs> a little, little bit at a time. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, yeah, they're coming now. Here's the boobs. ASL, please. <laughs> by, the t- by, the time, ten by the for t- ten. By the time you get a full thumb in there, you're done anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it off. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> you don't make it past the navel. <laughs> uh, one of the... <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what happens in, the, in this movie is that uh, there's this kid who's uh, not, he's not a good kid. None of these kids are good kids. And they're fucking with this uh, other kid, this other little, ner- <laughs> this other little nerdy kid. The good uh, kid. He, the he's good, a he's good, good kid. He's a good little, but he seems there's like he's a lot younger kids. than them. Uh, evidently, no, he's just smaller. Yeah, he's just a small kid. But, uh, <laughs> but they fuck with I him. I think he's a lot younger now. He's <laughs> small. Yeah, he's just he's small. a small good kid. <laughs> they fuck with him so bad. They're throwing birds at his windows. <laughs> They're fucking terrorizing this kid. They punch him in the face, take his picture, hang up all over town. Um, and you come to find out that this other kid that's hanging out with these bad dudes uh, and taking photos is used to be his best friend until the oh. incident. I think we all know. What that was? <laughs> That's a dark turn in this movie. Yeah. Holy shit! That caught me way off guard. Um, evidently, at one point when they were children, uh, he kind of abandoned him. Some, while he was some bullies uh, confronted the two friends, and unzipped. one ran off and left the other kid behind. And it yep. shows a picture of the bully unzipping his pants. So we know what happened there. Yeah. And that's a ro- that you can't come over. I don't think you can come back from that in a friendship. Like, dude, you fucking left. You fucking left me <laughs> there. And uh, yeah, it's it's just a group of bullies picking on a kid. You find out that one of the bullies used to be friends with the kid until he was able to be a cool kid, and then he started bullying the kid. Well, he ignored him right after that, that incident. The movie is kind of them playing an old child. The the two that used to be friends playing an old childhood game while walking through the woods, an imagination game. And it just kind of recounts their past. Right. Uh, did you guys have any nostalgia with this at all? Because we were like For teenagers. Sure. When Sounds, the soundtrack was on point. Like right, what, and, like teenagers. And one thing, <laughs> it seemed like in, in most movies, like when they try to put rock and heavy metal, it doesn't fit or feels forced. Right. This felt good. It, it was natural. Like, Anytime yeah. a good song came on, it was just, it, it was perfect. It wasn't really nostalgic for me because I wasn't into. Oh, I was listening bullying. to all that shit. No, I any li- of the music. <laughs> I, was, like, <laughs> I was listening. I was to, in the bullying. I was listening to all that fucking shit though. Yeah, uh, all the music in it. I mean, it, they did really did do a great job with the soundtrack, but it wasn't like I did. Wasn't it's just, what, the, it's just the era. Even yeah, if you, you heard those songs, yes. almost every day, whether you. Right. Like Even if you didn't like that music, think about movie horror movies that were made during that time. They would have that shit on the soundtrack. They'd sell you the, the soundtrack of the fucking tra- before the movie, uh, you know, in a, in a bunch of ads. Um, but it was I, that was a highlight for me. There's a lot of nostalgia. I I, I think I connected a lot with the main uh, character because he was like our age, not because of anything. <laughs> Anything else that was going because on. of that time, Frank one time abandoned his <laughs> friend. When a group everybody, of bullies. let's be honest, everybody's abandoned friends. It kind of is like that. Yeah, you kind of did a abandoned. Uh, j- 
Well, I didn't abandon them. They just then he, <laughs> this, no. This then is he went off. Then he shoots this someone in the navy or something. No, I'm not well, going to talk bad about. <laughs> he's got enough hard enough life as it is, just like everybody else, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> See, this you is the feel problem. Bad. Right you this feel the, bad, don't this you? This is the fact of the this matter. This is you feeling I, bad. I did let loose some of my friends that could not hang out with you guys. <laughs> so you can actually put yourself in. Yeah, people didn't like us. It, it was. Shoes. Think you about. Were, you uh, kind of were opposite. I was a kid playing Magic the Gathering in the lunchroom, and my friends were kids that would play with me. You guys would come over. Uh, this is exactly what happened at, at fucking study hall, man. You guys would come over. Palmer would take my fucking CD player and my book and look through it, and you'd fuck with their magic cards. You'd hide them. <laughs> you'd fucking me? Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, no, you me? Were, you would just. You were, uh, you were a bully in high school. <laughs> you just take a palm it, slide just, it on the just to make was this interested clear. in the game. I wanted to know what was on the card. <laughs> just to make this clear, I I wasn't in on this. I'd have played uh, magic. No, Jared was the cool kid playing guitar in the fucking gym. What the hell, man? <laughs> I think Jamie was a cool the, guy or a douchebag. I yeah. thought he was the coolest guy, except for that guy I, that broke the backboard. That think, was the coolest guy. I think Jason might have Jason might have more of his finger on the pulse than this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't I I remember a little bit of high school. Right. I don't ever remember being the cool guy. <laughs> I remember thinking you were the coolest guy. I was like, that guy could. He brought his guitar in here. He's put, play some fucking Marilyn Manson, brother. Yeah, and I think Jamie put me up to that to raise some money for a drum set that you used to play. Yeah, we, we played at the prom. How cool was that? That was Not really fair. cool. No, See, wasn't again, very cool, was it? <laughs> again, I'm gonna say <laughs> with, we, we made people cry <laughs> with, with your douchebag comment. I'm gonna say you got your you got your finger fully on the pulse <laughs> of what was happening. Uh. But so the, see, it brings apparently uh, there's plenty of nostalgia in this movie because it brings up memories. <laughs> yeah, we can talk. We're talking about high school now, but basically, this movie seemed like an extended episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark or Eerie Indiana. There was like it was not a horror movie at all. It no. was supernatural drama. Yes, maybe a love story. I don't know. There was there was a couple moments. So many levels of different emotions in this movie. Uh, I'm now starting to force myself to not get caught up uh, well the, was it a horror movie or not if it has horror elements in it um, and it does completely what Halloween uh, just the, the the kind of just the whole entire feel the way it looks the way it's shot everything it, I'm not going to say it's a straight up horror movie but it just has so much else into it that yeah. I'm not going to say it's not a horror movie it's a it, horror it's a horror movie with so many other it's elements in. It's a drama set in horror movie trappings. Yeah, but there's actually like there, a yeah, it's like a horror fairy tale drama. Yeah, because like when they start playing the game, like it just it feels almost you know like dreamlike. Yeah, yeah. Like it, everything right. just. It, I love this movie. I think was it 2016? Yep. I think this is probably one of the best movies to come it, out in 2016. Don't get me wrong. I, I like Great this movie, movie a lot, but. I'm just saying for our show, I was like, this isn't really for our yeah. show. Um, we don't always have You don't to. know until you watch it. We don't always have to eat bologna. I watched no. this movie. This There's is bologna in here, man. Who the fuck acts like these skater punks? Who's like, uh, he's like, he's like, what did, what did he say he wasn't going to do? I'm not going to vandalize the thing. You will, dude. You'll fucking do whatever I fucking take. Like, oh, the grave? Uh, he wasn't going to take pictures of the them he, messing up the grave when they're in the convenience store he, right. he has a confrontation with that with the main bully yeah. guy whatever he wanted him to do i'm not gonna fuck i'm not gonna do they, that anymore they, dude they mess with the kid's mom's grave oh yeah, yeah and yeah. wanted him to take pictures of it yeah and that i think there, there's some dialogue in it that i that's a little i don't know it feels a little heavy for what i would think regular teens like they get a little every everybody has parts they get a little too poetic it's fitting for the vibe of the movie, but in like keeping characters feel real, it feels a little heavy. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't think. Oh it's yeah, like, this oh, this fucking movie I made me cry like a little baby. I wouldn't bitch. call. <laughs> so, yeah, let's let's I get into I wouldn't call that, that baloney. <laughs> let's get into Frank uh, crying. I, I cried at this movie. It's a sad movie. Think think about this is all. It the, is. This is. Uh, but the, I just want to know exactly what this is. What made me cry? Okay. I whenever I was thinking about like. Uh, uh, it made me think of being a kid, you know, and it was like, how many kids do you remember in elementary school that you remember their faces, but you can't think of their names? 
like shit like that. Like you're like, they just people just, you know, friendships. Uh, anybody, there's kids that you were hanging out with all the time that you don't know anymore or whatever. You see them now, it's fucking weird. I did not have many friends. You guys were about it. Well, and you're still here. <laughs> but anyways, what part? What part of the movie? Did that tear drop? It, well, it's, I, it might have started. I might have started feeling that way after that. Uh, him leaving his friend in the little rape. Oh, so thing. early. Well, so that, that that was a little tenuous. But then when they're up in the tree at the end, whenever they're like, and then it really came whenever he fucking saw him dead in the in the lake or whatever. Yeah. Um, when it, when he finally broke down and uh, hugged. Oh yeah, the boy yeah, at the yeah. end. That's when it, that's when my emotions started to flare up. I was like, "Whoa!" Gotta bring myself out of it yeah, a little and bit. And just because we didn't get there, but we kind of said it, you know, we told what the movie about. You find that one of the friends, one of the smaller of the two friends, that's always getting bullied. They go on this big journey back to get home, playing this game. When they get to the very end and get where they're going, the smaller kid is actually dead in the water, and the other one has. And he's been, been dead the whole time. Yeah, he's been dead for pretty much the whole day. The only scene I think he's actually alive is where he gets punched in the face right in the beginning. Well, he, they show him sitting there drinking Jack Daniels, and then he breaks the bottle, and then that's yeah. the last. But, uh, but so he's been walking with the ghost of this friend just long enough to realize he I, I've, was... I've heard someone say it's almost like um, uh, the, the Bill Murray, the Christmas story Scrooge. or whatever. Yeah, or I guess, who, yeah, you, you can say that. How it kind of walks you through. That's what it's called, Scrooged. Yeah, okay. Oh. But well, I was actually thinking of... Uh, oh, the real one. Yeah. Christmas Carol. But they both, it's the same thing. Yeah, I so. heard it, I read constantly they were comparing it to um, uh, uh, Lost Boys mixed with Stand By Me. And I was like, that's not true. There's no fucking vampires. I don't know. There's a group of bad kids. I don't know if that's what you're saying Lost Boys for. But um, regardless, here's a life tip for everybody. No matter who goes down the dark storm drain tunnel, don't ever go down the dark storm drain drain tunnel. You know that never works out. No matter who does it. No, no matter who you see don't walk in it. there. Your your wife walks in there. You say, hey, hey, <laughs> hey. No, we don't. No, I don't care if the dog's in there. Come out now. You never go in there. You never go in there, ever. Um, so the, the the black guy dressed all in white. Death. Death. That's what so, I was thinking. So if he keeps seeing death and he and he's kind of running from him, wanting to stay away from him, did he die at 4 p.m.? When, when, yeah, I, when think they the, I, I think the idea is, and it's really the only supernatural element to the to the show, is uh, he's a ghost. So, like, he's just kind of... Wandering. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I kind of saw it coming. I won't lie. Um... I wouldn't be surprised to hear a lot of people be like, eh, I kind of called that. Like, I don't, I, I, they have him in corpse paint. I did not call it. And uh, it really set in as, like, yes, definitely, when uh, they kind of ended up at that, uh, oh, the party thing. Yeah, the and, Day and of there, the Dead. Yeah, and there was the picture of him with the Day of the Dead. Well, yeah, that, that was, <laughs> that's was, a giveaway. It was like, eh, he's probably, this kid's probably uh, dead. And this is, this is my second time watching it just as good and there's little things just like in any other time you see a movie twice that you pick up on the second time this movie's great i, I love but they movie. they do the bullies are kind of following them um not exactly chasing them but just showing up in random places and like the other supernatural elements are their shadows will be wolves there's a lot of yeah, it's analogy very, to the, running the storytelling to this and, is brilliant so yeah I, I thought it was, I thought it was uh, highly effective uh, in celebrating Halloween just in general. I think it's a good Halloween movie because it is happening. It is. It, happening. it, it, it is, but it, it's it's not in the forefront. Um, uh, I think it's also highly effective uh, at making you cry like a little baby. Uh, I will probably watch this again because I liked it a lot. I gave it a seven out of ten. I'll probably give it a higher score on a rewatch. Right. Uh, I'm I'm going with an eight on this. It's shot well. The, the, the soundtrack is, is awesome. Uh, so many different emotions come into this movie. It's, it's not your straight horror movie, but who cares? Well, I, watch, I, I can't recommend this enough. Watch this movie. Um, really, uh, 
I really hope this would get a Blu-ray release in the U.S. I, I think it has one in the U.K., uh, which I, I can get. But I, I, I hope this movie should be a lot bigger than what it is. So I hope it gets a, a good U.S. release and people get to see it. Yeah, I had a hard one rating this movie. Um, I found myself watching The Clock a lot. It is kind of long. Um, it, yeah, it's like, I think it's an hour fifty-two or something it's like that. Because they're walking a lot. It's the Lord I love of, it. It's the I Lord of it. the Rings I, effect. I found myself starting to watch the clock about a half hour in. I can see that with you. Like it didn't. But it's you it's, and Frank. I would. I would yeah, say. I definitely. This was a segmented watch. It's it's <laughs> one. Of, it's like the relic for me. It's hard. It's hard for me to really feel like I'm rating it fair because it's a very well put together movie. It looks good. I mean, I mean, the look of it is really good. The only real criticism I would be like, this works against the movie, um, on, a, on technical wise, is some the dialogue just feels weighty for teens. Um, that's that's about it. Everything else is, I thought was put together really well, but it's just it's ninety eight percent heavy drama, and um, even at the end, even in that, at the end, like the bullies show up where the kid's dead and the one friend that's still alive ends up crying on the shoulder of the worst of the bullies and like and he's he, still a terrible asshole and like <laughs> he he reaches out and kind of hugs him and gives him the it's okay and they show scenes after they kind of have their little falling out of how mad that guy actually is so they even kind of paint it like he's a horrible person but more because he doesn't know how to feel feelings and express it like they make they other than some of the dialogue they make the characters really real um but uh yeah it's it's 98 percent heavy drama so my entertainment level watching it was about a five um rating it as a movie like saying here we go it gives me shit and, about and my let scale. me be clear it's not 98 well, percent heavy drama i just want to say jared's exaggerating that quite a bit well it I, it feels unfair. I, my my enjoyment of it was a five, but because it's a kind of movie I whatever don't enjoy. Whatever you want, baby, whatever you want, come on. Watching it, it's clearly put together way better than a five, so that it just feels unfair. If you listen to Jason's description of it and say, that sounds like a movie I would like, absolutely listen to Jason and go with the eight. If you're like, man, that just kind of sounds like heavy drama, listen to me. And don't watch it. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't like serious movies at all, you're you're gonna be with Jared probably on a five. It, may, it might be. I just watched it at a time where I wasn't watching. I would. I didn't want to watch a movie to feel feelings. I'll have to go back and look at the movies that came out in 2016. But I I gotta say this is probably in the top ten. So. Well, there you have it. Uh, 